Hey everyone, this is Angie at Stampin' with Amore. Welcome to my channel. Today I have a Christmas book treat holder. So this is the one, this is the one I'm going to share, but I wanted to show you another example that I made for more of a grown-up, and I'll tell you what I used for this one as well in case you want to make it instead of this little gingerbread one. I love this designer series paper. I'll show you that here in a second, but I even did some little lines for the book pages, and then this just opens like this, and then you have lots of room. And I usually, when I have a box like this, I usually like will put um, a doily or something in there and then put the candy. I just like to make it pretty. And I did use, and another thing is if you want to cover this up, you can cut another piece of designer series paper for the inside. I didn't think it was necessary um, to do that, but it just folds inside here with the little like leather bound band so it just slides in there like that and it's how the closure is and we're going to just do this little gingerbread from the sending cheer which you know I love this gingerbread and this paper is so pretty and I use the same paper on this one and then I use the Santa I just cut fussy cut him out and fussy cut the trees out but you can use your scan and cut to the to do that. I didn't know if I was going to make a bunch of these or if I was just going to make this one. I love this old timey paper. This looks very retro to me. And then I thought I should have just used the spirit of the season to make it look more like a book like I did this one with the happy holidays um, and just cut up hoping your home is filled with the spirit of the season. But it's cute as just like that. But I wanted to do that. I also did the little scoring all the around the three sides on here. So yeah, this one opens the exact same way. I used some little brads here for the little strap. And this is what I'm sharing today. It's really easy to do. It looks like it's a lot, but it's really not hard to do. I did... The reason I'm not sharing this one is because I did do a lot of fussy cutting and I thought this would be much easier to share and it's more whimsical and for a kid it would be really cute. But if you want to do one for a grown up, this is Cherry Cobbler and this is Real Red. So we're using Real Red with this one. So the paper that I used I have to show you because it is absolutely beautiful. But by the way, the last chance um, list went out for Stampin' Up! By the way, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe, hit that bell for notifications each time I upload a new video. Give it a thumbs up if you like it and share it to your friends because all those things really help my channel. And also, I always put an inspiration sheet on my blog at stampingwithamore.com. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, by the way, for those of you who don't know. <laughs> but I do use a lot of Stampin' Up! I use other products as well, but I mostly use Stampin' Up! I love their products. So this is the designer series paper I used. This is the, some of the Santas. You can use this Santa here as well. And then I love the Santas. They're so old timey. And then here's the page that I used for the Santa and the trees. So that's what I cut out there. But this paper on both sides is absolutely beautiful. Really retro and kind of old timey. And I really love that. That is really my style. I love that. And here's the designer series paper I use for that one as well. So the name of this is Traditions of St. Nick. I think this Traditions of St. Nick may be a online exclusive, so you may have to look in online exclusive. But I'll have all the numbers in my blog post on my blog at stampingwithamora.com and in the description of this video. All right, so let's get started with this. And I'm going to show you what I used for the stamp set. So I used the merriest trees for the sentiment on here. And then I used the brightest glow, the happy holidays for the sentiment on the gingerbread that we're using. And this is the gingerbread that I'm using. And the dies as well for this because they're the sending cheer dies. It comes as a bundle, by the way. All right, so now what you're going to need here is a piece of real red. This is for the outside of the book and it's eight and a half by four and a quarter. You need a piece for the strap here and this piece is three quarters by five and a half and then the little part you need for the little enclosure is one half by one and a half. To mat it you need a piece that's three and a half by four 
This is the inside of the box, and this is five and a half by six. And then you need some very vanilla is what I'm stamping my little gingerbread on. So that is all that we are using. Don't worry about the measurements. Like I said, there's an inspiration sheet you can download and print on my blog. All right, let's do first, let's stamp the gingerbread like we usually do. Get the stamping out of the way. Sorry, my allergies are bothering me today. I don't know, my voice keeps going in and out. So I'm sorry about that. But we are going to use copper clay. And we're going to ink this little gingerbread guy. I think this is really the perfect color for him. So we're going to use that. And this will lighten up a bit as well. I'm going to grab some of my black ink here. I have so much on my desk, y'all. I'm doing crafts for Christmas for my sisters. I'm doing some things. Uh, making ornaments and stuff. I have stuff everywhere. It's been crazy. All right, and then let's, oh, I forgot to stamp the sentiment. Let's do that too. I'm just going to turn it and stamp it on the side here where there's a straight edge. And I just love that Happy Holidays. It's just so plain and simple. It fit this really well. Okay, then you're going to need a little piece scrap of real red as well because we are going to cut out the little hearts for the front of the gingerbread. So these are super tiny. Be careful if you get this. Don't lose those hearts. Um, I've been keeping a really good eye on them because, oh my goodness, you can lose them so easily. And then we're going to do the gingerbread. I'm going to cut that out. And then I'm going to cut the hearts out, send it through the cut and emboss, and I will be right back with all that. Okay, so these are little tags, which are so cute, but I'm going to cut off the top of that. And here are those little hearts. Oh my goodness, y'all, these things are so tiny. I used these before, and um, yeah, I'm really keeping a good eye on <laughs> this die because I love how little they are. They're so cute. I'm going to flip these over so I can grab them with my Take Your Pick tool. And I'm going to use wet glue for this. It's just the easiest to put his little heart on here and just put a little dot. You don't need a whole lot. So let me grab this. Y'all, if you don't have this tool, it's such a good tool. Um, it has so many things it can do. It interchanges the ends interchange. So there's a lot of things that we have that you can attach to them. Alright, isn't that cute with the little hearts on it? All right, I'm going to grab my little snips, and we are going to cut off this little part. Just like that. And he's all ready to go. He looks like he may be a little well done, but my other one lightened up quite a bit, so I think he's going to still lighten up. All right, let's go ahead and score. So on this piece right here, we're going to do quite a bit of scoring, and I'm going to show you how I got the lines for the book. Some of it's a little tricky, but it's okay. Don't worry about it. So you're going to do it at one inch on, e on all four sides. And I'm going to cut this really quickly. I'm going to just cut into here because I like to be able to flip these little ends here so that I can score a little bit better on one side. So this is how we're cutting this. It's a really easy, simple box. I've made similar boxes like this, but never in a book. <laughs> and I thought it would be so cute to have a little Christmas book. You can make it like a little cookbook or anything that you like it would be really cute all right so I am going to take my stylus and on these ends here they're really easy to do you are going to just score with your little score um, just going to score down each one of these this is where you need wax paper and I didn't bring it up again but you're going to just score every 
eighth inch on here. Just so every little line that there's on here. And you're just going to keep scoring down each one. But I want to show you how I did the other side because it's a little bit trickier. These ends that you can fold these back. It's not so tricky. It's a lot easier. If you want to do all four sides, you can do four sides, but I'm just doing all three sides. And because we're putting the other one up against the back of the book. All right, now on this one, you have to do it a little bit different. And what I did was I just felt where that was, and I lightly go across here, but then when I get to here, I'm going to press down. And I'm going to stop right here because we don't need to go that way and then again just feel where that groove is and then go down on here and then I'll do this on all the sides all three sides and then we'll be back I'll be back um, I'm going to speed it up here Okay, so it's all done. Can you see that? All right, I did all four sides because I couldn't remember which side went up to the back side. So I went ahead and just did all. It, if you have this simply scored, it's super easy. You can do this on your trimmer as well. Um, but it's a little bit harder to get them perfectly even on all this. And when you have the simply scored, it's super easy just to go down each line. But anyway, I went ahead and did all four because, yeah, I couldn't remember <laughs> which side went up against the back of the book. So we are going to fold these. I think it's so cute to give it this extra detail and it only takes an extra couple minutes. So don't be afraid to, to do that. It just adds, and if you have a book lover in your family, it'd be really, really cute just to decorate it. I think it is one of the long sides that does go up against there but oh my goodness my my brain I have so much going on y'all anybody get like that around the holidays when you are thinking of all these things you need to do okay we are gonna just line these all up and then we're gonna do the same on this side hanging over on the top which this one does not I did pretty good at that and then that's your box right there that's your inside oh and <laughs> we didn't score the other pieces we need to score these pieces as well oh my goodness all right let's score this piece we should have done this all at one time but that's all right we're gonna get it done okay for the front of the box this is the outside part you're gonna score it at three and three quarters and four and three quarters. That's it for that. But this little strap here, we need to score. And you're gonna score this at two and a half, and then five, or three and five eighths. Three, one, two, three, four, five. And that is for our box. Rem make sure that this long piece is the one that attaches to the back of the box. So, um, yeah, I'll show you that here in a minute. Or it'll be too long in the front for you. All right, what I want to do first on this one is I am using my copper, uh, copper clay Stampin' Right marker. I'm just going to go around the edge here. And I have a way that I usually do it. I'm going to grab my ruler really quick. And I'm just going to put stitching around here. You don't even have to do that. But I try to just make it real even here, and then I just go down and try to just do it even. I don't even measure it. I just try to get it about the same on all the sides. 
you know, and you can do a freehand. And this is just a little tip that way I, the way I do it. I just wanted to make it look a little bit more old timey. And I don't know, I feel like the stitching added to it. Let me know what you think in the comments. <laughs> Because I did put the stitching as well on the straps and stuff, and I'll show you. I do it the exact same way as I do this. So it just makes it, I don't know, a little bit more and needed something. I don't know. That's, that's how I feel about it. <laughs> All right, so on this strap, we're going to do the same thing, and I'm just going to go around the edge here to make it kind of look, Give it that vintage leather look. Again, you don't have to do it if you don't want. On the corners, I usually try to just do it on the ends like that. But I like to try to make them pretty even. Okay, and then on this other piece as well, this one right here, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to freehand this because it's just too small. And you can get this pretty straight. And I'm going to go around this whole thing. Oh, well, you know what I forgot to do, though? I forgot to cut the end. I'll show you here in just a minute. I can still do it. All right, so that's that. And now, like I said, this is the longer piece. This is the shorter piece. So what I want to do is I'm going to snip right to the center here because I want to get this as close to the center and we're going to just make a little and then I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and go around this part right here just like that all right I am used I, by the way I did use copper clay on the other one that's why I'm keeping it cohesive there all right so here is our other part right here and we're going to take our box and we're going to put glue on here. So if you if you didn't want to do all four sides of your book um, with the little lines in it, it's the long side here that matches up here. So we're going to try to put this center. This this is why I like to use wet glue. I like to get it pretty close to right in the center. And then just use your finger and seal that down. And then we're going to mat this piece. Again, I'm just going to use the wet glue. Isn't that pretty in the back, though? I, I love it. It reminds me of old-time wallpaper. <laughs> and then this is going to go here. On the one I did with the Santa, I actually put the stitch marks on the outside and I think I made it a little bit tiny bit smaller than this piece all right now we are going to put this piece on I'm gluing it but you can use your um, tear and tape for this part I'm just gonna glue it make sure it is in the center so try I just eyeball it but and then this will just come up and around like that. And now this part we're going to put here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark with a pen. And I'm using this bright green one because I can't see um, where I'm going to mark it. So I'm just going to put a dot here and here. And be very careful with this part because I'm going to use my paper piercer and my little foam that I have here. You can see I've used it a lot for this purpose. But I'm going to just press a hole here and the hole there. And then we're going to put it back on here. And now that that hole's there, I can put this back on and we can mark it. I'll make sure it's nice and straight though. And I'm going to mark it there. In there so I can see those two green marks that I just marked and then we're just going to take our paper piercer and do the same thing there and there 
And this is how we're going to put in our little brads. And the brads that I'm using are these round and square brads. I'm using the little ones because the, the big ones just look too big. I'm going to use the little tiny white ones. If I can grab them, they're really small. But these are Stampin' Up, but you can use any brads that you like. And I am going to line this up with the holes that I just made. And we are going to, and I like that these are small, so, you know, they're not too big and bulky on the inside. But like I said, if you want to mat it, you can mat that as well, the inside. Or you can even just put a strip across this, like cut a small strip across here, put a sentiment or something um, in the inside. But that goes like that. And then this will slide just right underneath like that. But isn't it cute with the little, I love the little lines in it. I think it just really makes it. Okay, I'm going to grab some dimensionals and my sentiment, which I didn't cut out yet. So it's right here. So I'm just cutting it. I'm going to cut it a little bit thing, thinner here. All right, and then we're going to just make this like it's the title of the book. I'm going to put it right there. And then I'm going to use some dimensionals to put our little gingerbread on here. He's so cute, though. I love this gingerbread. This set is going away, by the way. So it always makes me sad when something I love, and I've used a ton out of this thing this year. Um, so I know quite a few of my, my customers have gotten it because I've showed so many different projects. So if you want this little stamp set and bundle you need to grab it before it's gone because the last chance items always go so fast all right so there you have it everyone i hope you enjoyed it it's so fun like i said on this one i use the black um brads on this one but i did fussy cut all those and yeah i thought it was a lot of fun to make i hope you enjoy you can fit a lot of treats in here Go to the Dollar Tree because they have some really cute treats as well. All right, everyone, here's my December host code. I am going to do gift with purchase again for December because it is the holiday season and um, I'm not sure what it's going to be yet. I need to look and see what I can figure out. But please, this time, use the host code. I did make an exception the last time. But I'm not going to do it this time because I need you to use the host code for me to be able to buy the free gift. So anyway, I hope you all have a blessed day and I will catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye.